Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's awesome guest, I have to thank Leif Arnenson. I said his name right. He was on the show last week, and I called him Leif Erickson. <laughs> mispronounced his first name, totally gave him a different last name. And yet he still, to thank me, sent me this awesome sweatshirt. Mm -hmm. And I will put a link to it where you can get it. But what I love about it, not only because of what it says, it's so soft. And now I live somewhere cold. Well, today's guest also gave me a sweatshirt once. And supposedly she's going to give me another one because she's, <laughs> she's in a different company now. She is one of my favorites, always has been just like smart, and kind, and she can be your doctor too. She does telemedicine, but now she's with a company that can take insurance. You know, we have so many awesome plant-based doctors, vegan doctors on this show that are able to do virtual con con consults pretty much everywhere in the United States and not in the United States. But the big missing was is people weren't able to use their insurance. And this is news to me. She told me about this. So I don't know anything about it. We're going to hear from Dr. Marvis. Please welcome Dr. Lori Marvis. Yay, Dr. Marvis. <laughs> uh, thank you, uh, AJ, for having me. This is, I so enjoy being on your show because I always walk away so energized and it's just a blessing every time I'm here. So thank you for having me. Well, thanks, but it's not fair that now that I'm in Northern California, you live in Southern <laughs> California. It's like we met that one time, I think it was in Washington, D.C., and then never the twain shall meet. No, I think there was once in Denver, we were actually in the same, oh, yeah. Yeah. that one there. That was fun yeah. too. I but. remember because you accepted me as I am because see, I, I broke my back 40 years ago, God, it'll be over 40 years ago. And so I need to stretch a lot. And I was doing one, the stretch that I do and you <laughs> still were talking to me. You didn't think it was all that weird that I was, had my legs up against the wall during a conference. You know, you just, you liked me for who I was. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you've just been so generous and, and loving towards us. So I, I, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, yeah, I happy to tell you a little bit about Mora Medical and what we're doing. Yes. Tell, tell us about it because I, I know nothing. I'm so say. excited to share. Um, well, thank you again. Um, so we, uh, sold plant-based telehealth, as many of you may know that I, when I am licensed still in 50 States in DC, um, we started plant-based telehealth a few years ago and we sold it. I, really felt um, obligated to increase access for people because I would have patients who would come and see me. And um, unfortunately, they're like, you know, Dr. Marvis, I can save up for a few months and then I can come see you. I was like, you know, why can't we utilize insurance? And so this was the big push with Mora. And um, our CEO is Marty Hussein, and he's a co-founder with myself. And he had a wonderful experience helping his mom reverse her diabetes, of course, with plants, you know, the, you know, the story, how it goes, she stopped medications and he's a serial, very successful entrepreneur. And um, so I've been working with him and our amazing team for a, a little over a year now. And it's just been really amazing to see such a wonderful place uh, to grow, but we've really tackled the, the very enormous hurdle of getting enrolled and credentialed with insurance companies. And currently we're in, in the five larger states, but we're, we have a special thing that we have going now that we can do in all across the country. And it's, we can do blood tests and have you meet with a doctor, <clears throat> excuse me. And I'll also be the blood test that if we don't have a doctor, particularly right now at this moment, we can do a webinar and we can go over these tests and say like, these are your the, these are the good ones. This is why it's normal. This is abnormal, what you need to do. And that's at test.mora.com. But the more about Mora is mora.com. And what we do specifically is all of our doctors, we have uh, four or five docs and five doctors, including myself and six PAs, physician assistants. Um, we run group medical visits. So the beautiful thing about, you know, really transitioning to a plant-based diet or a vegan diet is people really struggle. Sometimes they, the processed food is, everyone knows your, your journey and your stories. And the really important factor here is the accountability piece and working as a community and connecting with people. And we have such beautiful stories of people creating friendships and helping each other through this journey um, outside of our group visits. And in that group visit, you're learning all the pillars of basically lifestyle medicine that we did with plant-based telehealth. 
but we really focus in on that plant-based diet. We work on, of course, the exercise and sleep and flexibility and mobility, of course, is part of that. And then, you know, stress reduction, but really engaging in the community aspect of it is so important. We do offer the one-on-ones if needed, but again, which we can bill insurance. I would say in, for example, in Florida, Texas, California, Ohio, New York, um, soon to be in Colorado, Pennsylvania. And, um, but again, the test, the blood test can be ordered across all 50 states. And the neat thing about that is we're covering about 80% of lives. We take Medicare, Medicaid, um, because really, it, again, I, I can't even tell you the ones that really need us the most can't afford, you know, to see necessarily a cash pay a doc. Um, but those who can, wonderful. But at the same time, you're already paying for your insurance. Why can't we use it? And um, so that's the big thing. We work with corporations as well. We have some really awesome pilots that have done well. Um, and, you know, we, we really want to work along other doctors who can't or can't do this as much as they'd like. So if there's doctors who want to refer to us, we're happy to work with them. We don't take away the patient. We're just trying to help supplement what the amazing work they're already doing. And that's really the main thing with Mora is um, we're just really trying to increase accessibility across the country. That's cool. What does what does Mora stand for? Mora in, in Spanish is a berry. Um, and so we had started out as blueberry. And then there was a trademark issue um, with a little uh, a pediatric telemedicine company. And so we went with Mora. So Mora.com. And again, you know, we're we're just really trying to be so service oriented. So that's why it's such a joy to work with everyone in our company. That is, when did you start this? Well, um, we there, I first became an advisor to them in October of 2021. And they were doing some tech stuff. Cause like I said, Murdy came from the tech background. And um, so then it kind of, I mean, it became their part-time CMO or chief medical officer. And then I went full-time in June when I sold plant-based telehealth. So it, really started with the more piece and really honing in on what we're doing probably just just about a year ago almost a year ago that's fantastic i did not know this i don't know even <laughs> how i found out so <laughs> you you are doc- how many different doctors are there like cuz i remember one time when you worked for plant based telehealth we did a whole week and we had there was more people in your company that could even come on so what's it like at mora so we have like i said uh, myself and four physicians i have three more doctors coming on in the next uh, six months or so and two PAs. Um, So our team is larger than the one at plant-based telehealth currently. Um, And they're all, I can't even tell you, I get emails every single week. (laughs) Doctors, amazing doctors, Yale trained. I mean, go to medical school at Stanford and Yale and these amazing people who are trying to make a difference. And they're like, you know, I'm looking for something like this that I can connect. And can I come work with you? I literally have two interviews every single week and I'm booked out through the end of March for doctors who want to partake with us, but I'm like, I can only hire so many (laughs) at a time. So um, I'm just, I'm just amazed at there's such incredible talent out there that people want to help, but there's no place for them to go um, and be hired as a physician. Um, So that's really what we're trying to do too, is a place for people who want help and then provide, you know, take the doctors and the two shall meet and amazing things happen. Great. Can you talk about what the success has been like for the patients that go to more? You talk about de-prescribing medication, reversing chronic disease. So what are your results Uh, success rate been like? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of the same old story. You know, it's I always feel like I'm I'm touting like that fine print and <laughs> these results may vary, but honestly, these results are common. So you're gonna get the weight loss, for example, um easily just had a circle where average weight loss is, you know, five to 10 pounds over the course of 10 weeks. Sometimes it's more, sometimes, you know, it depends on the individual. We're seeing cholesterol drop, you know, upwards of 25%. Um, we can see, you know, mood improvement. We have folks who are over, you know, someone whose BMI is in the forties, right? So these are individuals are three, 400, 500 pounds. Um, they're moving for the first time in their life, or maybe they had, 
um, some type of, you know, other type of uh, weight loss surgery, and they were really struggling. And now suddenly, because they're eating better, and they're, they're moving, and their whole life is changing. So there's a new lease on life. So the deprescribing, of course, it goes along with everything else I've ever done in the past. So we're stopping insulin, you decrease the diabetic medications. For example, just yesterday, I met with a couple of diabetics and they've already lost 25 pounds and it's only been like six, eight weeks and they're down to half of one medication. So, you know, just incredible results like that. It's, it's just ongoing. This, that's why I, I push through and do the hard work. <laughs> uh, they're trying to get these things to work. Yes. So you're not a primary care place. You, you still recommend people have a doctor, right? Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. Because, you know, there's going to be times that you need that physical exam. There's things that we can't or, or are really focused in on um, because most primary care doctors are just really struggling just to see enough folks on their panel. For example, we have one PA. She was saying that she has 4,000 people assigned to her. I've never heard of such a high number. I thought I was high at like 2,500 as a physician. And um, there's no way she could see, even if you saw one person a day, every single day for their well, like there's no way she could see 4,000 people in a year even. So it just astounds me. So we really are coming alongside of the primary care doctor or even the specialist and just providing, you know, the physician oversight. And so we can de-prescribe medications, um, really help people see a new light, help with that behavior change piece. The accountability piece is so very important. Um, and really, we just want to help those who are really struggling. They're just not sure what else to do. What are the benefits of a virtual visit? Oh, man. So the virtual visit, I'm, I'll tell you, I've been doing telemedicine since 2017. And I, I would struggle to go back into the office because I can really see people in their homes. So, for example, you know, just the other day when I was running, we call them circles, our groups we call circles. Um and which I love that term, but the fun thing was, you know, we we're talking about what she could incorporate more into her diet to, you know, help her, um, with more weight loss and be, feel more satiated. And she's like, wait, I want to go grab it. Hold on. And she's pulling out, you know, something and we're talking about it and that can't happen. Or maybe I had another patient who was like, oh, wait, let me look at this medication. I don't recall the name and they go to their medicine cabinet. So there literally is, um, opportunities to, that you can't do in an office setting because they're at home, they're more comfortable. Um, I can meet someone if they're at lunch at work, they go into their car and they join us. Um, yeah, there, it's just it's just a, a wonderful way to engage with, if, with folks who otherwise wouldn't have access. If they're far away, if they live in a very rural area, they may not have an opportunity um, to see anyone with this type of specialty. And What's the benefit of having a vegan or a plant-based doctor? Because like with plant-based telehealth, it said it in the name. Right. I wouldn't have known you existed unless I don't even know how I heard to be quite honest. Yeah, absolutely. So the benefits of having a vegan or plant-based doctor is first of all, we're aligning with what's important to you. So we agree that a plant-based diet is the most helpful um, diet on exist in existence, right? So not only is it good for you and your health, but it's good for the animals and it's good for the planet. And so you're going to be working with doctors who aren't going to give you a hard time about eating a plant-based diet. And in addition to that, this allows us to understand that, you know, some folks may struggle with a plant-based diet and maybe they cut out beans for whatever. Let us help you get in beans into the diet. Or maybe they've heard some, you know, myth about soy or they don't want to do tofu or they feel like potatoes could be bad for you. Like we're ready to take those myths and just kind of make them, break them down and say, here's the facts. This is what food is actually very good for you. Nothing to be afraid of here. And the beautiful thing there too, is we can really hone in on understanding, well, let's make sure that everything looks good on your blood panel from a plant-based perspective. So that's the other thing that we have is we have a very specific test for those who eat a vegan or plant-based diet. And we can, through lots of, Lots, I'd say thousands at this point of te blood tests that I've <laughs> seen and looked at with patients um, can really hone in and help you figure out if there is anything that you're struggling with 
Maybe there's just a few fine tweaks that we can get the cholesterol down a little bit. Or if you're still struggling with diabetes, maybe there's a type one and a half going on. So there's lots of things and discussions. B12 is good. Your vitamin D status, like what does that mean for you and your stage of health and your, what, maybe there's medications that are inhibiting your B12 absorption. Um, lots of different things that could be going on. And again, it's very individualized yet at the same time, more allows us to, for you to connect with others who are in your same uh, struggle. Now, when you talk about accepting insurance, is it all yes. insurance? Is it Medicare? Is it private insurance? Is it HMO? Let's get a little bit more specific because we yeah. want to know. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So we're definitely doing Medicare across the country, Medicaid. Um, we take what I'd say is top 80% of the population. And for example, in California, we take Medi-Cal, um, which is over almost what, 30, I think it's 36% of the population. And um, we really want to, you know, use Humana, Aetna, Cigna, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, uh, which other ones? Sorry, United Healthcare. Um, and in those plans, there's Medicare Advantage plans, and there's lots of different PPOs and HMOs. We're working on getting in Kaiser. We're really trying. And um, so, yes, all of those, we are finally, um, it took six months uh, to finally get enrolled and credentialed with these insurance plans in the way they like to take their time. And um, yeah, it's and it's incredible. So the majority of people we're going to be able to accept insurance. We're going to start working on Tricare um, and also VA, um, so we can actually access and support our military families, which have you know near and dear to me as I am a vet as my for myself. Um, and you know, we just we're trying our hardest to allow those anyone who wants to join us can. And there is a cash pay option um, if you want to do that. It's for the for the month. Um, for four visits. So it's four one hour visits with your doctors, $250. Um, granted, I understand that is still an expense, but it's um, it's as much as we could do in order to get you in to see a doctor for four hours a month. <clears throat> wow. You, you, you talk about there's a private Facebook group for the folks. Yeah, absolutely. So um, it's a really fun little vibrant community we, we got growing. So as, as patients, if they choose to, they don't absolutely have to, you know, they can engage with other patients um, in the group and we're promoting um, daily things like, you know, uh, habit change and we do food demonstrations within there. Um, we talk about recipes. Recipes is a big one, <laughs> you know, and uh, how do we eat help more healthy and make it taste good too? Um, you know, that's a big one. And it's really fun. So um, yeah, that, that group is growing and um, it's fun just to kind of be a fly on the wall and see what patients find important. Do the doctors and the people that work for more, did you guys live all different places? Yeah. Oh my goodness. We're everywhere from, let's see, we got Hawaii, California. No, I'm, I was in Colorado, but we do have one in Colorado. We have Florida. We have some that are coming that live in New York. We have some in North Carolina, Utah, <laughs> and there's a few other places in there. So Texas, there's a couple in Texas. Yep. I think that's everybody. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. Let's see. Um, if there's any questions, please put them in the chat, starting with four question marks. Let's see what else I want to ask you. You know, how, how do you do it on Zoom? Are the patient visits hmm. on Zoom? Right. Absolutely. So the it's the it's very similar is that if, if any telemedicine uh, company that you see, they a lot of times will use Zoom because it's HIPAA compliant. So we have a electronic health record that we use that's all HIPAA compliant. It's very simple. Um, and the Zoom technology is part of that visit. So you get a Zoom link and you join. There's a patient portal piece that so that when we order labs, we use Quest or LabCorp typically, but you can use other labs as well. But those are the ones that are national. And the piece of that that's really important is that that's a that's a direct communication with our team. And we really want to make it easy. So you don't have to call someone up. You can just send a message and we respond. You can see all your lab results. All of our patient education goes straight to the portal. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a very effective um, way to use and see patients. How easy or hard is it to get an appointment and do people get to choose their provider? Yeah. So basically um, the only, the only uh, restriction would be licensing. So if we have uh, doctors, you know, of course, 
not everyone has uh, 50 licenses because um, that, that is a challenge in and of itself. Um, but yeah, so basically it's based on, we'd filter out by one where you live and where you'll be during the time of the appointment and then licensing. And we have several options in times because we're trying, we're doing, you know, in the day, in the evenings, on weekends. Um, so we're really trying to provide as much um, flexibility for the patient as possible. Yeah. Is great. And when you say you order these tests, yep. like how does it work? Like there, you yep. give them a, pres- a script or like you fax it or email it and they just take it to whatever lab they like. Yep. So nope. Uh, it goes through quest. So we have a, we have actually contracted with quest in order to get a steeply discounted rate on some very expensive tests. So tests that would have cost thousands of dollars and we're passing that to our audience. And the, the reason we're doing that is because we shouldn't be inhibited to know what's going on in your own body. So we really want to help people understand what's going on because then you can make those changes. It becomes a little bit more real for you, right? The data, it's kind of like where I, I love continuous glucose monitors, the CGMs, because it's like real time data. Um, but basically what happens is they would go to the test.mora.com and whatever panel they would find uh, that they want to look and see. Then one of our, uh, we have a nurse um, in a medical assistant who would probably call or sometimes a PA might call and um, get that information from you, get you inside the portal. The labs are then ordered uh, through Quest and you'll get a, a print off. You can print it off. It's also ordered electronically. You can also, um, we send you a text link that you can actually use a text as well. You take it to any Quest near you and I would say 98% of America would have a Quest within you know, driving distance to get those tests done. Um, on plant-based telehealth, when I saw, I literally saw thousands of patients. Um, I can only remember, I think it was remote Vermont and Hawaii. <laughs> I really struggled to find a place. And if you can't do it there, um, we can, you know, we can figure out a solution for you. Oh, great. Here's a wonderful question from Randy. If yeah. you, meaning Dr. Lori Marvis, was my doctor when I was with plant-based telehealth, would I still need to do all the first-time questions again? Um, he's probably talking about that really long lifestyle medicine intake form, I'm assuming. And there's a shorter version, um, but is for the blood test, you wouldn't have to do that. No, but, um, we would want to, because it's a new system. Yes. You'd have to answer a few questions because we wouldn't have all your history. Nice. Thank you, Diana. Somebody said I should make a bigger deal ringing the bell, but Bailey was so scared of the big bell. So somebody oh, yeah. that be a little bell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Sheila says she loves this discussion. Um, Jean Marie says it's online. It says she's no longer taking appointments. So can you clarify the correct site for appointments? It's yes, mora.com. Yeah. I'm no longer with plant-based telehealth because we, we did sell plant-based telehealth and I have removed myself from plant-based health, but there's still fabulous, wonderful doctors there hundred percent. And, um, but now with the insurance piece, it's mora, M O R A.com. And if you want the test, look at the test, it's test T E S T S dot mora, M O R A.com. And that's where you can order the test if you're interested. Fantastic. And here is a question from Dog Mom. If insurance doesn't cover, can an FSA or an HSA be used to pay? 100%. Absolutely. Okay. Terrific. And Serenity says, Hawaii. So do you take HMSA? HMSA. I am not sure about HMSA. If that's a Hawaii specific insurance, not as of yet, but we could work with you on figuring out a solution. That's the other piece. We really want to help people find a solution. Great. Um, Susan says Kaiser is supposedly recommending plant-based to all patients and staff. Wouldn't they see you as competition? I don't know if that's true in all areas, Susan. Kaiser is a pretty big HMO. Yeah, Kaiser's really huge. And when I've spoken to to docs who work at Kaiser, you know, those initiatives are very um, independently driven within the organization. So yes, you will definitely see a a larger Kaiser promotion of a plant-based diet. But when you really get into the day-to-day struggles of seeing patients, I don't think it's any different than any other practice from, at least from my discussions with providers there, the ones that make an impact, they're doing a lot of extra work on their own. Great. Okay. So here's a question. Um, does Mora treat Lyme disease and take multi-plan PPO insurance? 
Multi-plan, yes, that was something very recently that I, because there's so many, I can tell you, there's literally thousands of insurance um, <laughs> types and companies. Uh, multi-plan is recently something that came across. Uh, now, as far as Lyme disease, I guess it would depend on if you're talking about active Lyme disease or something like that, that would require discussion in blood work and more to your specifics, but we don't have a necessarily Lyme disease specific protocol if that's what you're looking for. Nice. All right. Lots of questions. I'm not sure I understand this. COS insurance coverage based on state of residence or originating site of telehealth call. Um, so there's going to be a couple of things to understand. First of all, there's uh, the state that we have enrolled in. So right now we're um, as far as coverage for the blood test is anywhere, right? But if to see our docs with insurance right now, we're in Florida Live, Texas, California, Ohio, New York, and soon to launch in Colorado and Pennsylvania. And um, the other states, we can work with um, cash pay, or we can talk about some other options that are, are coming available soon. But the um, those states in particular are the ones that we're really working on getting the interest because they're the largest population states, hence why we started with those. Nice. All right. Do you accept Cigna PPO, Stephanie wants to know? Yes, Cigna is in, yes, Cigna is on our, it depends on what state you're in, but yes. Cool. All right. Thank you. And is the information on the televisit, able to be shared with our PCP, including labs, Jean would 100%. like to know. Absolutely. Um, if you want us to fax those, you can print them off from your patient portal and share them with your doctor yourself if you prefer. Um, absolutely. Okay, terrific. Um, does the 10-week course start on certain dates, asks Kathy. So these are rolling. Um, yes, we have multiple uh treatment plans or treatment, uh, I call it, I, I almost, I almost hesitate to call it a program because these are medical supervised visits. We're adjusting medication. So it's a medical practice, right? So this is our uh, intensive treatment plan. And so afterwards we actually have options that you can join uh, and see doctors regularly as well. Um, but the, the question, as far as what was her, the main question as well, specifically. I just, I just went down the screen. Um, oh, when, when is it start? It went, is oh, it, when it start? or start yes. on certain dates? Yeah. Yeah. We have rolling, we have rolling starting dates and you can actually join one that's maybe in week two already and we help catch you up. So you, we should be able to find any uh, state, you know, dates with you starting regularly. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Sherry's saying for the Hawaii person, she believes HMSA is Blue Cross Blue Shield. Uh, we haven't gotten Hawaii um, Blue Cross Blue Shield yet, but there is the the um, cash pay option, and we do have a Hawaii doctor, Doctor Yashoda, uh, nice. who actually lives in Hawaii. <laughs> do you know Do you know Doctor Terry Shintani? I don't. Oh, you got I know Doctor Terry Shintani. Well, no, because see, like you know, I'm the OG. You know, I'm like like 20, 30 years older than you. But this, he was like one of the originals. He actually bought Doctor McDougall's practice from him oh. when he left Hawaii for one dollar, and he he's just a precious gem. So the Hawaiian doctor there should hook up with him just because he's just such a marvelous human oh. being. Please, that would be amazing. He's just like, I love him so much. Uh, that's about it for Hawaiian doctors that I know. Oh, so Samina has just a general question that I think is a good question. And I get this question a lot when there's a doctor, but it's, are there any particular labs that you recommend every vegan or plant-based person should get other than the basic lab? Yeah. And if, if you really want it, so you don't have to write them all down. If you just go to test tests.mora.com, you'll see we have a basic panel for uh, plant-based eating and then the comprehensive. And that comprehensive would be the one that I, I highly recommend. There's a lot of tests, <laughs> you know, B12, vitamin D, your cholesterol, make sure you're not anemic, your iron, um, your kidney function, just the basic stuff there. And then looking at the B12, make sure that it's your know, methylonic acid and your homocysteine. A um, lot of different options there. But yeah, if you really want to just kind of peruse and you can click on those and, um, but that would be the ones we recommend. Oh, terrific. Um, 
Randy says, can you help us find a doctor in our area? I can't find a doctor, plant-based doctor in my area. Randy, why don't you type in the chat what your area is also while you're there? It's hard, isn't it, sometimes? They can also, um, we have, a, I believe, a contact form. If you have any questions, we'd be happy to, to answer as well. Okay. And, and this is primary care. So like if somebody needs to see a GI doctor or an orthopedic doctor, this is just primary basically, right? Yeah. This will be more of your basic stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Are, are you able ever to refer to vegan yeah. specialists? hundred um, percent. We're tr really trying, I'm reaching into, you know, creating those relationships because I think it's so important for us who practice this way to connect with one another, to grow lifestyle medicine with that emphasis on plant-based eating. And there's such amazing doctors. Like I told you, it's, um, I'm meeting them. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> well, there's so many. <laughs> well, send them to me. Cause I hope yeah. to have every single plant-based doctor on my show at some point. Ooh, yeah. That's like, that would be my dream. Uh, Serenity says Dr. Shintani will not take her as the patient. Cause she's not sick enough. What, you know, gain 50 pounds and he'll, he'll see you. You know, just kidding. <laughs> okay. Let's see. I know there's more questions. What about? And tell me where you live, Randy, and I'll see if I can help you. Um, you, you say, will she repeat that, please? But my chat didn't come in real time, so I got to be more specific. Columbus. Hmm. Oh, Columbus. Yeah, we, we're in Ohio. So yeah, please uh, check us out at mora.com. I think maybe she's looking for an in-person one. I saw, some, okay, here's a question is uh, uh, from Mona. Is the fatty acid profile different than a lipid profile? I'm pretty sure yes. it is. So we're looking at your omega-3s, right? That EPA, DHA, DPA. And the reason that's important, it's important for brain health and heart health. And so we just want to make sure that um, everything is, is where it needs to be. Great. Sorry, I can hear that dog. That was my dog, Daisy. Oh, I love dog. Maybe <laughs> bring her up in a second. We, we love having dogs on this show. <laughs> All right, let's see what else I can ask. And also, if you have time, you know, just because yeah. we didn't know what we were talking about until, you know, I always let the guests decide and send show notes. But whenever we got an MD, people have lots and lots of yes. questions. And yes. let me provide value, please. Yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe I'll pull a few of them up while people are actually typing in the chat. Okay. Yeah, Susanna, I fixed that link that you talked about. I have wonderful moderators that are texting me in real time. Mm -hmm. Let's see, get those questions from a different thing. Here we go. I'll answer them or I'm not going to answer them. I'll ask them in the order received. This one is from Carol. I'm a whole food plant. I've been whole food plant-based for several years. I saw a functional medicine doctor and he's concerned that my A1C is too mm -hmm. low. It is 5.0. Is it too low? Maybe you can say what an A1C is and it, what it's sure. supposed to be. And is there such a thing as anything too low for that? Okay. Mm, no, um, no. Uh, an A1C of 5.1 is not too low. So please be reassured you're okay there. And what an A1C is, it's a measure of stickiness of red blood cells in your blood. And the reason we measure that is because for diabetics. So as long as you're under 5.7, that's considered normal. 5.7 to 6.4 is considered pre-diabetic. But remember, even in the pre-diabetic stage, all the things that are destroying your body are occurring then. Just because you're pre-diabetic doesn't give you an option to ignore, by the way. Anyway, um, and then an A1C greater than 6.5 is a diabetic type 2 diabetes. And these are just points where, you know, the, they said, okay, this is the range. But honestly, the moment that you still have any concern that you're moving into even into the pre-diabetic range, that is really the time to take action because it's the most reversible and you have the most success by, you know, consuming a whole food plant-based diet, healthy vegan diet. And yeah, absolutely. But the 5.1 is absolutely fine. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anyone lower than like 4.8 ever in my practice. Um, yeah. And they were fine. So great. This is from Melina. I have stopped taking statins, Lipitor, 20 milligrams da daily. How long will it take for the insulin resistance to correct itself? Um, okay. I'm not sure. No, statins are referring to cholesterol lowering. Um, now, sometimes people who actually take statins can develop like a type two diabetes. If that's what you're referring to, that you had a side effect, um, I would say anywhere from 30 to 60 days. Now, outside of that, 
I'm not sure if you're having insulin resistant issues. It really depends on how severe the issue is, right? If you're a, a true type two diabetic and your A1C is 12, it's going to take you a little bit longer than someone whose A1C is a six, right? To reverse that process and how much weight you need to lose. So that's where the attention of a, a physician who understands what's going on is so valuable. Thank you. Do you see children? No, right now we're only 18 and above. But that everything you're learning can apply to young children. So the whole family should be involved in your journey. <laughs> that is really, really important. <laughs> and Cindy wants to know if you accept Aetna. Yes. Oh, yes, Aetna. Yes. Okay. Uh, Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield of Connecticut? Not Connecticut. Not yet. No. Blue Cross Blue Shield, Texas, uh, Florida, California, Ohio. We're working on in New York. Working You're going to have a lot to memorize before you had to memorize it, which states, you know, <laughs> you're just going to, I need it. to have a running list. Um, yeah. And we're just adding, yeah, with it's, it's a lot. I, I wish you guys could understand the hours and hours <laughs> we've exactly. done to make this happen. <laughs> this is from Jean. She says, um, I'm a very thin 80 year old lady with multiple vertebral compression fractures that cause kyphosis and scoliosis with resulting SOB, I guess that's shortness of breath and bloating. What are effective lifestyle choices to stabilize my loss of function, including diet? I think get a, get a telemedicine. Approach. Yes, I would so encourage you to um, you see a plant-based doctor because the reason that's really important to understand is that you know the osteoporosis that's causing those symptoms um, really should be a discussion we start in childhood, right? Because you know the bank the bone mineral density bank, it gets kind of full by age 30. And then we start potentially losing our bone mineral density as we age. And, you know, 30 is so young, right? And so really that discussion should start here. But as we, you know, we really don't really think about it. We don't address it. We're really not taught in medical school to address it at an earlier stage until someone's around perimenopause or menopausal, you know, someone who's in their 50s, 60s or beyond. So there are definitely some things that you can do. The piece that's concerning to me is that you have vertebral compression fracture. So you have to be very careful regarding like resistance training, but there may be some dietary things that we could actually use um, and really optimize the nu nutrient piece of that. So there's definitely some things that we could tweak on that side of things that if anything, to at least halt the progression, um, but that is a very personalized discussion and we'd have to be very careful with any exercise recommendations. I wouldn't just use a blanket recommendation for anyone like that. Thank you. Yep. This is from KB and KC. Mm -hmm. Are you still planning to conduct group consultations for patients and if Medicare will cover them? Yep. hundred percent. Cool. Uh, that, yeah. was, that was easy. I like that one. <laughs> Really easy. Didn't even have to go to medical school for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is from something hard to tell. This is from somebody with your name, but spelled differently, Lori. Okay. Uh, okay. I've had chronic constipation for my whole life. I've always eaten fairly well with lots of veggies, but three weeks ago, I went 100% plant based and I've not seen any improvement in this area. I believe I have an autoimmune issue of the bowel that stops peristalsis. I'm frustrated because no doctors know how to help me. Do you have any idea? Mm. Yeah. So there's some, that's a really interesting situation. So there's a variety of things that can cause the constipation. And again, I feel like this is a personal discussion because as we start looking into, is this functional constipation? Is there, you know, is the autoimmune issue going on? Was there a history of diabetes? Was uh, their medications involved, you know, lots of different things. Pain medications can halt this. Um, so just increasing, you know, fiber intake will often help a lot of people, but maybe there's some things else that we need to do um, and dive into the actual cause, because that would be where I'd want to start was like, what is the actual cause versus just, again, a blanket, you know, going plant-based, but plant-based is great because you're increasing your microbiome diversity and you're doing wonderful things. So don't give up. Don't give up, <laughs> please. <laughs> Great. All right. Thank you. And then we've got, I'm gonna switch, I saw some here for you. I get so many questions because we have like, we have like, like 22 doctors with monthly shows now. And it's like, I got to save them for all here. There you go, Marvis. This is, for, um, can vitiligo be healed or reversed with a vegan or plant-based diet? 
Um, so vitiligo is where the skin, it, it, it loses its melanin. So it, it's, it turns white. Um, and not that I'm aware of, um, can, it may halt the autoimmune process occurring there, but I'm not aware of any reversal of any of that. No. And we do have Dr. Jessica Krant the first Thursday of every month. And, you know, she's a, a vegan dermatologist, so maybe she might know something. I don't know. 100%. For sure. But yeah. uh, Marcia says, well, is this for you? Okay. Well, this is a good one. How do you overcome compulsive eating of sugar in the form of candies, cakes, and other processed foods? I'm 71. I weigh 155 pounds. She didn't say height, no thyroid and a yo-yo dieter. I'm bone tired of this behavior. She's not joining mm -hmm. some of my groups, hon. <laughs> I have one right now with Dr. Goldhammer and Dr. Lyle. Sounds like she definitely needs to join your group, but <laughs> yeah. The big piece, you know, honestly, AJ, one of your, my favorite uh, quotes that I always refer and you own is, you know, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. um, that absolutely has to be the number one. And then just really increasing the fiber rich food. So you remain full um, and just kind of looking in, is there, are there things that are occurring that make you want those, right? Are you, is there some stressful event or something? And really looking in, leaning into the cause of the behavior, like what are the preceding events? Because really that, that needs to be taken into account and addressed first. And then if you can stop the triggers, um, that really is a big piece as well. So looking at the full circle of the habit loop, right? So you have the the trigger, the cue, the behavior, and the reward. Um, the reward is that dopamine hit that they've created these um, palatable foods, highly palatable foods that are Franken foods, basically. Um, so yeah, so there's lots there that it, it's it's more about the three pound organ between your ears um, than anything. Ah, nice. I'm gonna go back to the uh, to the live chat and see. And, you know, this question I, I've heard before is: Is it normal for vegans to be slightly anemic? No. No. Okay. Good. Any recommendations for vertical lines and fingernails? Um, again, it depend on what we'd have to do. I would do some testing um, and see, make sure there's no nutritional deficit. Again, when did it happen? What does your diet look like? So again, this is very personal. <laughs> yep. Do they take Medicare HMO? Asks Elizabeth. Yes. Yes. Cool. Nice. All right. And do your doctors at Mora Medical recommend colonoscopy testing? Um, from the standpoint of what we're recommending, this we're we're really looking at helping people transition to that plant-based diet or someone who's already on a plant-based diet and struggling or someone who's been on a plant-based diet and wants to connect on what does their labs look like or what else they could do. We, for that discussion, I personally take it from the standpoint of what is your history? What is your family history? Um, what was your diet for maybe the six decades before you went on a plant-based diet, right? So really looking at the risk factors and then making that decision together. Awesome. Okay. I'm not sure I understand this question from Jean Marie. I was asking for an explanation of the test standard comprehensive panel or beyond. Which See, tests? Uh, on the test at more.com, there's a basic one and then there's a comprehensive for plant-based eaters. So I would recommend the comprehensive. I'm not sure. Nice. All right, let's see. Here's one that you don't hear too much, at least I don't, about being too thin. Mm. Uh, here it is. My husband, Sarah Ann uh, says, We've been on a plant-based diet. Since we've been on a plant-based diet, my husband's BMI is down to 16.5. How thin is too dangerous? How to gain weight on a plant-based diet? Work out, work out, work out. Yeah, so this is a caloric issue, right? So grand, this is, I've seen this happen, especially in kind of more so my older uh, women patients. Um, but you see there's higher caloric intake of those foods. So this is where someone who can indulge a little bit more in the nuts and the seeds and, you know, looking at the savory sauces with cashews as the base and things like that. Um, that's concerning to me though, is that it, how's the energy level? What else is he doing? Is he, um, 
yeah, is there's nothing else that's going on that may be causing the weight loss? That That is a worrisome thing. Is there any digestive issues? Is he not absorbing his nutrients? So I think a nutrient panel would be really important in that piece as well. And looking at a food diary, is he eating and just feeling too full and can't eat some other foods? Like, yeah, there's little, so much going on there, but that is concerning. I would try to keep BMI above 18 because that's where you don't see the loss of muscle mass um, occurring. Um, in the loss of strength, um, which is a big deal on longevity as we get older. Okay, terrific. Um, what test should I take, asks Deborah, to find out if I have Hashimoto's? Ah, so there's some, uh, it's called the TPO. Um, so basically you would wanna do a thyroid uh, peroxidase um, test. And so I have Hashimoto's, I've had it for, 27 years in April <laughs> since the birth of my second child. And I will tell you 11 years ago, when I went plant-based, um, my numbers improved and I'm on a much lower dose of the levothyroxine at this point. It's the only medicine I'm taking. And um, I've had patients who had high levels of that antibody and then it go to zero when, when they transition to plant-based diet. So of course that's in conjunction with a TSH and a free T4. So I would do a TPO, TSH and a free, T, uh, free T4. And those would be the three tests that you can kind of gauge as if this is an issue for you or not. Great. What about mammograms? Dr. McDougall is not a fan, so I avoid them. Mm -hmm. So mammograms, again, I think this is a personal issue, so I'm not going to make a blanket recommendation statement. Um, it really depends on your personal history, your family history, your risk factors, and what, how aggressive you want to be as far as, you know, further prevention potential of something that's happened. Um, now do, I think there's definitely some recommendations out there that are too often. Um, but if you look at my family history, for example, um, my mother had breast cancer, her mother and all their sisters. Um, so I'm genetically not, not blessed. So I would be someone inclined, even with my healthy diet to maybe do it once every two or three years versus someone who's doing it annually. Um, but again, I, that's a very personal and um, important question to discuss with someone who can look at all the evidence and then you know, see what's important to you. And there's other things outside of mammograms. There's ultrasounds, there's MRIs, um, and some other things that you don't have to have the radiation exposure. You know, I'm just, this is just a fun question from me. Since I've known you, you've lived at least three or four different places, different states, cities. What, what do you like the best so far? I, I am really liking Southern Orange County, California. <laughs> wow. I've lived in 10 states and this is by far my favorite. <laughs> Maybe it's just because I'm done with cold. <laughs> nice. Well, it's not cold where you are, but move up to where I am. It can be cold in California. Oh so. yeah, no, I, I agree 100%. I used to live in uh, Portland, Oregon. I went to college there and just a little bit further up. Yeah, you start going up the coast, you're going to get, get cold. But uh, this is fabulous. <laughs> Welcome to, the greatest, welcome to the great state of California. Happy to uh, have you here. Oh my goodness. Uh, Susanna says, how would someone know if they should be tested for a thyroid condition? Is there a normal screening for this? Yeah. Um, so, you know, it's interesting. Um, I believe I have that TSH on that plant-based panel to be tested as well. So if you're having symptoms of thyroid disease and you know, the most, it's one of the most common autoimmune diseases in the United States, um, it's a simple blood test. You could ask your doctor if you're having any symptoms of constipation, fatigue, um, hair loss, weight gain, things like that. Again, if it comes back normal, then I would look at other things, of course. But um, in certain patients, I've had a few that have gone strictly um, SOS free, and they weren't looking, paying attention to an iodine and having, cause most people get their iodine through iodized salt. And so if you're removing salt from your diet, many times are you removing that iodized salt? And I've had a few cases where people go, I went plant-based and now my TSH is raising and I've got this hypothyroidism. what's going on. We check a 24 hour urine iod uh, iodine and guess what? They were low. We put them on, you know, a natural supplementation, 150 micrograms daily, and it bounces up TSH drops. So few different things that can be causing it could be the autoimmune piece. Um, there's a lot, there's so many things that we can be looking at, but TSH, yes, um, would be your first start. Nice. Okay. Do you have advice for adults with ADD? Asks Jesse. You know, I love ADD because there was a lot done. <laughs> it, yes. Right. It was my, it was my entry into a plant-based diet. 
right? So 11 years ago, I had a patient who um, came to me in Rifle, Colorado, of all places. Um, and she was just a mom, but she said meat and dairy upset her stomach. But the the gist of this story for the ADD is that she went home because I told her stop eating meat and dairy. I hadn't understood. I never heard of a plant-based diet before, but we, I just said, stop eating meat and dairy, which left you know, a plant-based diet. So she came back in 30 days and brought her daughter who was 16 at the time and had her miss school to be in this appointment with me. And she goes, now tell Dr. Marbus what you did. And she goes, well, I was wanting to support my mom. And I started eating the food she was, and we cooked together and I felt so good. I stopped both my ADD medications. And so that led me down the path of Googling ADD, a plant-based diet. And I found, of course, T. Colin Campbell's book, um, The China Study. And of course, the Campbells have become very good and close friends to me and love them to death. And the important thing to understand here, this is inflammation, right, of the brain. Um, so everything chronic disease, is, you, there's some component of inflammation occurring. And there's no better diet to decrease inflammation over the long haul than a whole food plant-based diet. Terrific. Uh, but, um, um, how to eat a plant, how, what to eat in a plant-based diet to get rid of hirsutism asks Alexia. Hirsutism. Interesting. Um, so if you're having hirsutism, so it's hair overgrowth, I, you know, you think about PCOS and some other things. So you really want to think about balancing hormones and good gut health. Um, that honestly would be a discussion and some other things we'd want to look at, um, what's going on genetically, what's going on in your life, your food you're consuming, exercise. Um, yeah, I would definitely want to see what supplements you are taking, but uh, a whole food plant-based diet would be the first step. So I always remember to tell people, you know, regardless of where you are in your life, in your health journey, whether you're young and just starting out of the womb <laughs> to whether you're 90 or plus, right? There's such a spectrum of health that the way to build the foundation to improve where you are or can be, because everyone's going to be different, is starting with a whole food plant-based diet, right? So it's fruits, it's vegetables, it's beans, it's whole grains, a few nuts and seeds. And it's just so very important to understand that's the basis. And then you build from there. Now, sometimes there's still needs for medications and many times we can stop or deprescribe medications as well. Wonderful. You tell me when you want to stop. I want to respect your time. You probably oh, have 49, you other, long as you'd like. <laughs> have 49 other states to, uh, to help. <laughs> do you, Jen says, do you refer to a dietitian or nutritionist or is the diet handled in the regular visits based on labs? Yep. Diet is handled by the docs. Cool. Let's see if I'm missing anything. Let me know, Susanna. Oh, here's an uh, JP. I don't know if it's the JP I know, but and uh, that yeah. we both know. Any yeah. recommendations for plant-based remedies to help the common cough? So cough is interesting. So there could be a lot of reasons. So if you're on a plant-based diet <clears throat> and having a cough as I clear my throat, um, there may be a few things going on. Is there silent reflux? Is there medication side effects from high blood pressure meds? You know, so many things you could have autoimmune issues. You could have post-nasal drip. So we'd want to look again, this gets to the root cause. Like what am I treating, right? Am I just throwing something at you? Natural remedy. It's like, oh, it cures your cough, but what's causing the cough? we have to understand what is the root cause so we can make sure that we're giving you the right thing because what's the point of trying a bunch of things if we don't know the root cause. So very important. Yep. Get to the root. Um, I, I don't know if you're allowed to say where in Orange County are you? Zena wants to know. I am in Mission Viejo. Nice. All right. Um, Holly says, I've been whole food plant-based for two years. My B12, iron, and D levels normal. My doctor mentioned I was probably anemic due to consistent lower hemoglobin levels, but is not concerned. Are there any additional tests you'd recommend? So she said her B12, D, and what was normal? I moved it already. There's uh, D, B12. That's all she's iron. Her iron is normal. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So if her iron's normal, and then I would, I would look at not only her CBC, which is that complete blood count, right? That's where you're looking at your red blood cells, 
but are they, when you say they're low hemoglobin, is it outside the normal? Um, and if so, how much um, was the blood taken during your menses? Um, sometimes you can have a dip and you come right back up. Um, is a renal function appropriate? Cause that the kidneys actually stimulate the bones to make the red blood cells. So there's a few things to look at. Um, again, is there absorption issues? But if the iron is good, I would look at a few other things like uh, total iron binding capacity, your ferritin levels as well. And um, but yeah, that's something we can certainly do. But if your doc's not worried, it's probably in the okay range. Thanks. Um, but Lisa says, what are the biggest causes of inflammation? What should I stop eating to get the best results? Any processed foods. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is really a very simple answer from this answer from the standpoint of starting with removing the processed foods, and that includes processed vegan foods, right? Yeah, I know the diet, you know, the Dr. Pepper or the Coke and the Oreos and the chips are all quote unquote vegan, but these are processed foods. They have chemicals you can't pronounce. They have who, who knows whatever preservatives, imagine what that's doing to inside of your gut. That's step one, removing the processed foods, removing the dairy and removing the animal products and replacing those with whole foods, right? So it's fruits, again, veggies, beans, whole grains, nuts, and seeds. And if you don't see inflammation dropping at that point, or if it's only dropped and you're still struggling, that's where we start diving deeper. So let's, let's fix a very simple thing is what you're putting in your mouth on a day-to-day -day basis, and then see what's left over. Okay. Does Dr. Marvis have suggestions for the severe sore throat that occurs along with all the recent viral infections that people are getting? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So first of all, I'm sorry you're not feeling well. There's a, the flu is just like this. Um, we all you know hunkered down and now the flu is like, oh, look, more people are sharing my <laughs> the virus. So one thing that you can do is gargling with salt water. So you just put like half a teaspoon of um, salt in, a, I don't know, eight ounce glass of water, warm water, let that dissolve and gargle and spit. And I would do that first thing in the morning and first thing in the evening. And then you really want to stay well hydrated. Um, and if you're breathing through your, your mouth because your nose is stuffy, really working to, you know, humidify the air will help as well. That actually decreases viral and spread. So a humidifier, luckily here in Southern Orange County, I'm not going to keep harping how lovely it is here. It's just the right humidity. <laughs> um, but the humidity is really peace because a lot of people, like when I lived in Colorado, it's such a dry, dry place. So where you're sleeping, especially if you notice that um, <clears throat> you're waking up in the morning with a sore throat, um, there is some, and you'll hear me out. It's a little strange, but you can tape your mouth just with some like paper tape, keep their mouth closed it'll help with snoring and you'll breathe through your nose and you'll find your nasal passages are doing the work instead of your mouth. And that will help keep the mouth hydrated. Um, that those would be the big ones for sure. Yeah. I had James Nestor on the show and he wrote a book about that. And he talked yes. about that, the, the yes. tapeing of the mouth. Oh, I need to meet James Nestor, please. <laughs> I would love to talk to him. Yeah. Um, Alexia says that when she went plant-based, her hirsutism decreased, but she wanted to know if she could get rid of it permanently. Um, yeah. So that if, so if you saw some improvement, there may be some further tweaking that you could do. Um, so again, it would be a food diary and then, you know, having someone go over that with you with the blood test as well. Carol says with pernicious anemia, do I need to inject B12? I've heard different options. So it's interesting. I went in a deep rabbit hole about B12. So pernicious anemia is where you um, are not producing the intrinsic factor, which is think of as it as a, you get on a, at a train platform and you get on the train and it takes you somewhere. That's what the, the train is, the intrinsic factor, right? So it's helping you absorb the B12. So there are ways if you take it high enough oral, um, and I would test, don't guess, right? Look at your B12. There is some passive absorption that occurs, even with those, there are some studies that show um, pernicious anemia can be handled, but with a high enough B12 that there's some passive absorption from the gut to the bloodstream. However, most people um, would need to have an injection once a month, um, but it's something you could certainly try with your doctor, depending on the severity of your deficiency. Um, you may want to get it up to a level and then just monitor that on a regular basis with a high enough level. And, you know, we're talking two to 3000 micrograms daily, if not more, uh, to get enough of that passive absorption. Cool. 
Thanks. What causes a low BUN or creatinine of nine? Mona would like to know. A low what? BUN. Uh, BUN. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So the interesting thing with the low BUN, um, many times that's just a low, lower protein content. Um, depending on your diet, I'd encourage you to eat more higher protein plant foods like the beans and whole grains. Um, again, it may just be too, you'd want to maybe check the urine, make sure you're not losing your protein there. Um, so yeah, there would be some, and it may just be normal for you as well. Um, again, we want to look at you in context of you as the individual. Oh, doke. All right. Sorry. There's just lots of, lots of activity. Do you know anything about PXE? PXE? No, I'm not sure what that is. I mean, neither. Jen says, does whole food plant-based diet help elasticize tissues? Does it improve light sensitivity related to epilepsy? No, not that I'm aware of. Now we can decrease inflammation, um, but I'm, I'd have to do some research on the seizure activity and um, a plant-based diet, but I'm, I'm not as familiar, no. So I'm sorry, I can't help you there. Here's a good general question. How do I prevent cold sores, asks Sue. Ah, so cold sores um, being on the lips, I'm assuming is what you're describing because there's, you know, there's canker sores inside the mouth and then the cold sores or fever blisters, you may that be a term that you're more uh, familiar with. Um, so this is caused, it's a viral uh, thing. So sometimes it can be, um, it's inoculated usually when someone kisses you or touches you with the virus that causes it, right? And the piece of this that's really important is understanding your immune system will usually keep it at bay. So the virus is always hanging around, ready to come rip roaring when your immunity decreases. So you may see it happen right before you are ill <clears throat> or under a lot of stress, or if you're in the sun for a long period of time. Um, so there are some things there. Another thing that I found that was um, a cause is looking at the lip. Uh, any type of lip gloss or anything that you may be applying, like Carmex is the worst. Like I definitely see um, that actually cause um, some cold sores in some people, but you really want to look at looking at, you know, making sure your immune system is, is well cared for. Again, making sure your nutrients are in place. That stress management piece is so very important, getting enough rest and sleep um, and staying well hydrated. But yeah, there's absolutely, and there's some medications. Sometimes people have them so severe. There are some medications that can be helpful. Um, as well, topical and oral. Right. Um, Marley's saying, does L-lysine really help to decrease cold sores or herpes types viruses? Uh, this is obviously anecdotal because I'm not a study, but I, up until about 2015, I would get nasty cold sores run after the other. And the dermatologist said, take lysine. And I've taken it every day since, and I have not had another cold sore in like eight years. So yep. um, lysine absolutely does help. Nice. Well, work. that's great. I'm doing all right. Uh, I wish you could see my chat, then you'd know why I'm having such a. Oh, McBride, Jody, or Jody McBride, saying, I was wondering what Dr. Marvis's opinion is of getting the shingle shot if one is truly eating a well balanced plant based diet. Um, sorry. Um, I think that again, sorry guys, my, my, if you hear that ringing, it's just reminding me of a, a, Another thing, uh, when you think we'll about you go. you've, you've given way, you've given so much, you see, you can see what you, what kind of service you're going to get at more. <laughs> I mean, yeah, let, me answer, let me answer her question since you did ask, um, the shingles vaccine, again, I'm a proponent personally. I, I do, uh, prefer to do everything I can to avoid, um, illness. So if you've had chicken pox as a child, you're at higher risk of getting shingles. And again, that goes back to that immune piece. And I, just to be anecdotally, to share a story with you, I had a young woman who was 35 who came in with the worst case of shingles I had seen in a really long time. She was, I believe, yeah, 35. And the, you know, what caused it was her father died and um, she wasn't even eligible to get a shingles vaccine. So Personally, I, I think if there's, you know, minimal side effects and you don't have any risk, I, I'm a big fan of full prevention. And if we can utilize the amazing medicine that, again, medicine saves lives. Um, and I'm not, I'm still a doctor. Um, but if you want to prevent that, sure. Um, I, I'm, I don't think there's any problem with getting it. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. Cause this is okay. a good general one. And, and okay. I mean, 
hear this a lot. It's about salt. Uh, yeah. My from Melanie, my iodized iodine. My family doesn't use iodized salt, so I'm guessing no iodine consumption is happening. What do you recommend for iodine? Um, it depends on what you're doing. So if you guys like to eat like the little nori or something like that, you got to be careful because you could eat too much. <laughs> so too much iodine and not enough iodine, you're going to end up with a problem in the thyroid because the thyroid is what utilizes iodine to create the thyroid hormone. So um, if you aren't uh, consuming like those type of things, like um, seaweed type stuff that has iodine in it, you can do a supplement and 150 micrograms daily is ideal. Perfect. Well, you are just wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Marvis. I wish you every success with your new venture. And, you. Uh, you know, if you ever want to come back on, just let me know. Maybe we can do a more medical week like yeah. we did for plant-based telehealth. Absolutely. And, meet, they can, and it doesn't necessarily have to be like a whole week long, but maybe we can meet the whole team at once. That might be kind of fun, you know? Absolutely. We'll set it up. Definitely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. You look so young. You got, you're getting aging backwards. I, <laughs> I will be 53 in October. That's a, looks good on you. You're born 10 years after me. That's right. You're Scorpio. I remember that. Well, thank you so yeah. much. Thank and guys, you. Check out all the links below. You're, you're having a lot of special on a whole bunch of different tests. Everything yes. you gave me, I put right below. Thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Thank you, Dr. Marvis. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when I have two more fabulous plant-based doctors who happen to be married to each other for the debut of a brand new show on the Chef AJ Broadcasting Network. It's called Overcoming Autoimmune Disease with Dr. Micah Yu and Dr. Melissa Mandala. And they're going to be talking about long COVID and what to do about it. Take care.